Hi there! In today's lesson, we will learn how to model into the terrain environment. Edificious Land is the landscape design software for gardens, outdoor spaces, and terrain modeling. To access Edificious Land, we just have to click in this button on the left bottom panel. The first operation we have to consider now is defining the perimeter of our terrain. So let's click on the workspace, and from this menu we can choose either if we want to draw manually the perimeter, or if we want to use the Google Maps integration. Now by selecting the first option, I can draw the perimeter by inserting vertex point. After we insert all the nodes, we just have to click on the green button, we can see our terrain in 3D. While on the right properties panel, we can see if we want the elevation value visible on the terrain. Then we have the classification with groups and typology, and we can change the perimeter typology, for example making polyline instead of rounded segment. In case of rounded options, we can also choose the curvature value. Then again we can use the functions in this menu, so for example we can change a segment into an arc, or eventually assign an offset to the edge of the terrain. And as seen previously, we can also insert nodes to our perimeter. Now that we have the perimeter, we can start editing our surface morphology. First of all, we can insert some contour line to define our elevation. And to do so, we can use a DWG file as reference. So click on this button from the menu, and from this window I will select a DWG file. From here I will choose a scaling factor, and then I just need to click on the workspace in order to insert our contour lines. Now I will use an automation tool that allows me to recognize all the contour lines in one go. So click on the magic wand, and select the contour lines we need to import. But of course we can also insert manually our contour lines, so click on this button from the menu, and then just insert the vertexes. From each of these contour lines, we have the following properties on the right panel. Of course we have the elevation value, that we can insert on the properties panel, or we can adjust it from the 3D view, by moving vertically the green cone. As seen previously, we can also make the elevation value visible on the terrain, just by clicking on this node. Then again we have the line typologies, and eventually the curvature value. Now let's analyze the other function that allows us to modify the surface morphology. To define a contour plan, we need to insert some closed triangle. So click on the surface to insert the vertex, and then confirm. Then for each of the nodes inserted, we can define an elevation. For example, minus 7 meter for this one, minus 6 meter for this other one, but we can also change the elevation manually from the 3D view. The last option for the surface modeling is the elevation nodes function, so we just need to click on the surface to insert one node. Then we can select the node and insert the elevation directly from the 3D view, for example, minus 7 meter, but also from the properties panel, or again manually by using the green cone. Now that we have defined the perimeter but also the surface, we can start the project stage and now on the menu we will have some new function available. For example we can start from the earthwork. So select the function from the menu and then we need to insert some vertex points to define our perimeter. When confirmed our earthwork will be inserted in the surface of the terrain. Its surface will be horizontal and it will take the average elevation of the vertex nodes. We can click on this button if we want to set the elevation of the nodes equal to the terrain in that point. Also for this surface we can change the elevation in multiple ways, so for example we can write minus 6 meters directly on the 3D view, but we can also insert the value from the properties panel or we can use the green cone. Of course by dealing with the network we can have an excavation, a fill, or with an inclined surface we can also have both of them. And from here, in the geometry panel, we can have some useful informations, like for example the excavation and filling volumes. From the toolbar we will have access to other functions, like for example we can change this segment into an arc, or maybe add some nodes, or eventually an offset. Then we can add the escarpment to the perimeter, for example in this case, I want to add a 2 meter escarpment to this earthwork. And this is the result in the 3D view. Also this new perimeter can be manually modified. By default, the earthwork surface will be horizontal, but we can change these properties from the right panel. So for example, we can have a pitching line, and we can define the inclination from here, or eventually we can have a pitching through three points. 
Again, from here in the properties panel, we can have other information regarding the surface and the perimeters, also for the escarpment. And now let's check another earthwork typology. With this function, we can insert a fixed section cut. We need to click on the surface in order to add vertex nodes. From the toolbar, we can access this function that allows us to change the dimension of our fixed section cut. Also, for this typology of earthwork, we can define the escarpment by inserting the correct value here. And the properties panel, in this case, will be very similar to the previous one. Now let's have a quick look at the terrain areas function. By drawing vertex nodes, the defined area will adapt itself to the terrain surface. For this area, we can have a different color, and we can also have some information from the properties panel, like for example surface, perimeter, and so on. Now let's delete all this object in order to insert a road. Also, this object is defined by vertex node, and by default, each of this node will take the average elevation of the terrain in that area. From the toolbar, we can see we have the same function as seen before, so for example, we can edit the perimeter, or we can also change the width of the road, for example, inserting 4 meter and half. Then we can add a 1 meter escarpment, and as you can see, it will adapt itself accordingly to the terrain surface. Then with these functions, we can add some solids to the side of the road, which is useful in case we want to add a pedestrian path, for example. Of course, in this window, we have to insert the dimension of our solid, and this is the result in the 3D view. On the right panel, we can see some properties for the road nodes. For example, from here, we can change the elevation of this node. But as seen before, we can change it also from the 3D view, just by moving the green cone. Of course, the solids, but also the escarpments, will be automatically adjusted to the new configurations. From the 2D windows, we can adjust the curvature in this node by moving these blue flags. While from the 3D view, we can change the vertical curvature. But now let's come back to the previous configuration. Here we have the material layer option that we can modify by selecting a new one from the beam object library. In this box, we can see all the geometrical information, like for example length, excavation and filling volume, perimeter, surface, and so on. And now let's see another object connected to the road. The art object is also drawn by vertex on surface. The functions connected to this object are almost the same we already learned for the earthwork object. The only difference is that here we will have a material layer composition for the surface. So, for example, we can access again the beam object library and choose the same material layer composition of the road. Then we can choose a different elevation, or having the yard nodes at the same elevation of the surface. And eventually, also for this object, we can apply the escarpment function. Now let's have a look at the landscaping wall. This object is inserted as a polyline on the surface. As you can see by inserting the point, this object will follow the surface morphology. And now we can check the properties for each of the segments of this wall. So on the properties panel, we can change the elevation, the material layer composition and the thickness, and the geometry properties, like for example the height of the entire wall, or deep this wall should be continued under the surface, for example, in this case, it can be one meter deep under the surface. We can change the shape of the upper and bottom profile. So, for example, having a slanted profile, but also an horizontal, or like in this case, a stepped profile. From this box, we can choose if we want the segment visible or not. And we can also change the height of the single part of the wall. Then from the toolbar, we can also choose if we want a railing or a solid connected to the upper side of this wall. So, for example, by clicking here, I will have this railing with all its properties on the right panel. Or instead, I can add a wall cap by clicking on this button. Another useful function of this wall typologies is related to the road object. So I can insert this road, for example, then choose the landscaping wall from the menu, and select this magic wand function. This option will recognize the side of the road and automatically insert a landscaping wall. Now let's insert this wall in order to learn another automatic function. Now let's suppose we want to insert a filling behind this wall, so we'll need to select the earthwork from the menu and click on this magic wand button. Now on this window, we just have to select the lateral offset and an offset from the upper or lower profile. And here there is our earthwork automatically inserted. 
Next element in our menu is the flower bed object. In order to draw in a flower bed, we need to define a perimeter on the terrain surface. As seen previously, we can change the properties of this perimeter, for example, by converting this segment into an arc, or assigning an offset of 50 cm. Now let's select the object from the 3D view, and we can change the height of each single segment. We can change the elevation for the internal surface, and we can use some of the functions that we used previously for the landscaping wall. So for example, we can insert a railing, or maybe a wall cap, like in this case. Now let's have a look at another similar object, which is the swimming pool. So let's insert again a perimeter, and when confirmed, we can see our object completed. Now from the 3D view, we can select the water surface, and change its elevation from the bottom, then again we can insert a railing, or a wall cap, and we can change the perimeter geometry from the toolbar. Now let's see how to insert some vegetation. So select the tree function from the menu, and then from the properties panel, we can access the beam object library and choose which typology of vegetation we want to insert in our project. So for example, in the tree folder, I can choose a pine or maybe this tree. Then confirm and click on the surface. By grabbing the green cone, we can change the height of the tree, but as seen before, we can change this value also from the properties panel. Another function related to the vegetation is available by clicking this element on the menu. Now we can insert a polyline on the terrain surface, and all the vegetation will be inserted over this polyline. From the properties panel, we can select up to three different vegetation typologies. For example, the first vegetation object can be this one, the second could be a lavender variety, and the third one could be a Kenzia. Then we can change some properties, like density, dimension, scattering, and so on, in order to have a more realistic representation. We can also apply the same function on surface instead of polyline. So we will insert a perimeter on the terrain surface. And again from the properties panel, we can select different options. So for example changing the density, different dimension, and scattering as well. 